Tasmania is the largest hub in the Southern Hemisphere for international marine and Antarctic science and is set to grow even further. New state government plans for the Hobart waterfront have drawn ire from business and tourism bodies today, but the university hopes they'll make Tasmania even more attractive to scientists. My wife's uh, funding in the UK came to an end. She typed her job title into Google and a job appeared in Tasmania. Simon Allen and his wife Karen are indicative of how international Hobart's CSIRO has become. Simon gave up his UK job in the offshore oil industry and also moved to Tasmania for a job at the CSIRO. I'm really interested in the, the science of observation. Uh, you know, marine and atmospheric research is, a, is an observational science. It collects information about the environment, about the, the oceans and the atmosphere. My worry, my, my kind of interest is, is how do you measure? How do you observe those things? His wife is interested in the measurements, specialising in coastal studies. Karen Wild Allen is leading a major project on the River Derwent. This um, instrument will be collecting all this data and um, telemetering the information across the uh, 3G mobile phone network back to the laboratories um, in near real time and it's the first time we've been able to deploy such an array of instruments and it's, it's particularly exciting to be able to do that this in, in Tasmania and we're going to put this, uh, this mooring out in the mouth of the Huon estuary. Included in the data will be sediment and nutrient movements as well as phytoplankton and oxygen. It'll have a range of applications. This is important for shellfish um, farmers because they have to close their shellfish fisheries during um, harmful algal bloom events and it can impact also on the aquaculture for the salmon farmers too. Many of the CSIRO's research programs have attracted the attention from the scientific world. Which brings us here to Hobart, the global hub for Southern Ocean science. The oceans really are a major controller of our climate and climate variability, things like El Nino, the drought flood cycle, but also climate change. So the oceans are one of the rate setters at how fast and where the warming can happen. Susan Wafels heads the CSIRO's Argo program. Argo is an international collaboration and uh, we have about 20 nations working together to maintain uh, an array of very simple robots. We call them profiling floats. There's about 3,000 out there now in the global ocean. And what they're doing is they're returning uh, information about temperature and salinity to us in real time. As well as tracking warming of the ocean, the Argo data is used for ocean forecasting. That's trying to forecast the, the detailed state of the eddy, where the currents are, where the uh, strong vortices are in, in, the, in the ocean field. After growing up in Western Australia and New South Wales, Dr Wafels did her PhD in the United States before moving to Tasmania. She's relishing the cross-collaborations here. I'm an ocean physicist and I think mostly about climate issues, but there are many people around us and colleagues that think about ocean ecosystems. And we're only the technology is only now really allowing us to talk to each other and help each other out. And then I think the other exciting things here are, is the fact that the Antarctic Division is based in in Hobart. Those collaborations are only set to increase if the head of the University of Tasmania's new Institute for Marine and Antarctic Studies has his way. We've been formed in order to pull together the research interests in the University of People who are interested in marine and Antarctic science, but also to provide very strong links with our partners, the uh, Australian Antarctic Division, CSIRO Marine, uh, and uh, the National Maritime College in uh, Launceston, and I hope that our links will continue to grow. But our central partners would be the state government uh, through the Tasmanian Aquaculture and Fisheries Institute. Michael Stoddart says the key to increasing the integration will be the relocation of the institute to the waterfront next to the CSIRO at Princess Wharf No. 2. In ever so many ways Hobart already is a hub. As our brand, as it were, gets better and better known around the world, I can predict that we'll, we'll have a, a large number of people wanting to come and spend time here. They have $45 million from the Commonwealth for the move, which is expected to be complete in 2012.
I would like it to be known around the world that if you're a student with a marine background, marine biology or oceanography, and you're interested in the high latitudes, the temperate waters, the cold waters, Antarctic waters, there would be only one place in the world to go to do your PhD, and that would be here, IMAS, right in the heart of Hobart. For some, it already is. I am from France. Uh, my father is actually Swiss and my mother is from Brittany. I grew up in France and then quite young, wanted to travel. And um, oceanography has always been a passion. As a kid, I was always in the water. Amelie Mia is in her third year of a PhD looking at climate change using data from the Southern Ocean. This project is part of a bigger project, which is international, so we are collaborating the group here with people from the National Oceanography Centre in Southampton in the UK and with uh, some people from the Woods Hole Research Institute in America on the East Coast. With family and friends already having been or due to visit her soon, there's more than scientific tourism to benefit Tasmania. The more you have people coming from abroad having a good experience and you know they write home and tell people about what it is here, the more you get coming. Um, all the for Every lecturer or student that comes across a postdoc, you'll have you know, two or three of their students coming across at some point, whether it's just for a three-month stay or whether it's for um, a year or a, forever. A lot of people that come here end up wanting to stay a long time.